The other day, a customer called me and said, what the heck is a pseudo wire? I had to laugh. Well, my name is Mark Rice. I'm with Cutter Networks, and we're going to talk about what a pseudo wire is and where it's used and why you need it. Essentially, traditionally, communications was done over TDM circuits, time division multiplexing. We've all worked with the T1s and E1s. There's tons of equipment out there that are aggregating voice and data over T1s or over E1s. And the world is changing. You can't stop progress. It just keeps coming. Well, things are migrating to, to IP. More and more things are going over packet switch networks. The networks are faster. The networks are more resilient. The net, networks offer tremendous advantages, and they're cheaper to deploy. But you've got all this gear out there that you spent a lot of money on. You don't want to lose it. You want to be able to continue to use it. How do you do that? You need a smooth migration to be able to use that old, older equipment, that legacy communications, over your new network. How? Well, here's where pseudo-wire comes in. Essentially, we're going to pass a T1 or E1 over a packet switch network. To do that, we have to have a device capable of it. Now, RAD Data Communications was one of the first to introduce a product like that. They introduced a number of years ago the IP MUX. And as time has gone on, they've learned, probably with bumps and bruises the hard way, They've learned things that needed to be enhanced. Today's product is so robust, it is just really beyond description. If your network is solid, if you've got QoS on that IP network and you hook up a, a IP MUX product to it, it's going to pass that, that, suit, that uh, TDM traffic very, very reliably across there. And anything that was on that original TDM circuit will now be going over packet switch network. Now, I'm not going to kid you. You can't just put it on any network. You can't send it over the public internet, for example. There's no quality of service there. But if you've got a solid network, and today there are lots of them out there, the IP MUX family will allow you to transport that TDM traffic. Now, there's some neat features in there, too. Let's say that there is a little bit of delay in your network. The IP MUX can handle some of it. They handle up to 180 milliseconds of jitter or delay in that network. Uh, what about loss, uh, signal loss, or on a T1, fault propagation? Are those features still there? You better believe they are. You can do loopback testing across a T1 or an E1. You can uh, propagate any fault from one end to the other so that if something's wrong on one end of the circuit, that, that signaling is passed to the other end. You can even take the IPMUX24 and put it in its own gigabit Ethernet ring so that this resilient fiber ring, in the event that anything happens to one of the nodes on the ring, the traffic can go the other way, so that your voice communications remain intact. Now, there are all kinds of features that are built into this. You can take one IP MUX at one site, and you can talk to two different IP MUXs at two different remotes. The possibilities are endless. You could take all this legacy equipment that you've got and pass it today reliably over your packet switch network. Now we're going to take a closer look at a product here in just a minute. We're going to look at the IP MUX24, a particular model of one of my favorites that has SFP ports for the network connection. We'll talk about why that's important in just a minute. Here we have the RAD IPMUX24. This particular model is for a single T1. On the front of the unit, there's just a few LEDs. We have a power indicator, a test and alarm indicator, and then three LEDs that indicate the status of the Ethernet connections as to whether or not they're active. On the side of the unit, we have ventilation holes, but there's no fan or anything to fail in there. On the back of the unit, uh, we have our power connection, which will operate 100 to 240 volts AC, or this same unit can operate at 48 or 60 volt DC. We have a serial connection uh, that is used for initially giving the unit an IP address. It can be used for other things too, but most commonly most of your other management, once you give it the IP address, will probably end up being done through the user ports. Uh, here we have our connection to the network. Uh, that's, this particular one is an SFP. So that's, very, that's a great advantage in that you can hook it up to different types of networks. You can hook it to a fiber, uh, let's say a fiber fast Ethernet network or a gigabit uh, network. 
Uh, you can put a copper SFP in there. Having these SFP slots gives you a lot of flexibility and allows you to connect to either gigabit or fast Ethernet networks. Same thing is true of the second port. This second port can be used as a network port or as a user port, depending upon your application. And then the last port here is a copper uh, user port. The way these units work, of course, is they see to it that priority is given to the T1s and before handing off anything to the user ports. This particular model, as I previously mentioned, has a single T1 in it. You'll see there's spots here for other ports if you had a four-port model, but this is a one-port model. Okay, well at this point we've taken a look at an IP Mux 24. We've talked a little bit about what it'll do. We've talked a little bit about pseudo-wire, at least as much as we can in a short video clip like this. At least now, you won't be that person who will call and say, what the heck is pseudo-wire, because you saw this video. You know, if you have an application and you want to pass legacy traffic over a packet switch network, I hope you'll give us a call here at Cutter Networks. 727-398-5252. Again, my name is Mark, and I look forward to speaking with you, and I hope that you'll like and subscribe to us. Look forward to speaking with you. Have a wonderful day.